Okay, hi there. Welcome to a micro video where we're going to explore the idea of the concept of the deadweight welfare loss and think of some topics where you can apply the idea and then build into your analysis to help you get top marks in an exam answer. So first of all, of course, let's define our terms. What do we mean by the term deadweight welfare loss? Well, it essentially refers to the loss in consumer and producer surplus when a market fails to reach uh, uh, an efficient level of, of output and pricing. So essentially, deadweight welfare loss comes about because of one or more market failures. It can also happen because of the effects of an intervention by the government in a market. Now, how can we apply the concept of the deadweight welfare loss? In which topics might we bring this into our, an analysis, particularly in an, an exam question? Well, here are five examples. Uh, there are others. And we'll produce a short video on each as part of this series on welfare losses. So we'll certainly look at the impact of negative and positive externalities leading to market failure. The loss of welfare, the deadweight loss, can be an absolutely key part of a diagram to get you to the top echelons, the top parts of a market scheme very quickly. We'll revise monopoly pricing, the extent to which that leads to a deadweight loss of welfare. And likewise, an intervention in markets in the form of import tariffs and import quotas. In other words, is there a link between protectionism and welfare losses? And we'll also do a quick, a quick video looking at the impact of price collusion between oligopolistic firms and the impact this has on consumer welfare. I think the key point is that the welfare loss idea is really useful if you want to build, get to very high levels of analysis marks in your exams. It's a great concept to have on board. Now, using the data about welfare loss helps to build depth into your analysis. And it also encourages you to develop your diagrams. Examiners are very keen to look for developed diagrams when awarding the top marks for analysis. But be aware, as part of evaluation, that the putting an accurate monetary value on these welfare losses can be very difficult. OK, so as part of the base for looking at this, let's go back to the idea of market equilibrium and economic welfare. So here's a demand curve for a product. The demand curve is assumed to be downward sloping. The demand curve is essentially the private benefit curve, the benefit that the consumer gets from consuming extra units. And it, it falls because of the law of diminishing marginal utility. There's a cost curve for the supplier, and the supply curve is essentially the, the private cost curve, the cost of supplying extra units. And the market is in equilibrium at output Q1, and the market equilibrium price of P1. And we assume that all consumers pay that price P1. Of course, you can change that assumption later on. Now, at equilibrium, at the free market equilibrium price, P1 and Q1, we can measure the welfare. <clears throat> we know at that point private cost and private benefit are in balance. And let's put some letters onto our diagram. Uh, a, B, C, we've already got P1. Well, uh, consumer surplus is the area A, B, P1. That's the area beneath the demand curve and above the price P1. There's another triangle there which we call producer surplus, area P1BC, and that's the area above the supply curve and below the price. Now, consumer and producer surplus are measures of welfare. And uh, if we think about the equilibrium point, a point B, the total welfare, consumer surplus plus producer surplus, is maximised a, B, C is maximised at the equilibrium price. You won't get a bigger area of economic welfare, A, B, C, than that unless one or both of the uh, supply and demand curves shift around. So when a free market is in equilibrium, economic welfare is maximised. We, we maximise the area of consumer and producer surplus. Well, if we're not at equilibrium, this brings into the idea, it brings into play the idea of a deadweight loss. So it happens when a market is not at equilibrium or when market prices don't fully accurately reflect the social costs and social benefits of production and or consumption. In other words, there's a market failure. 
to go back to our original point we had a few seconds ago, this market is in equilibrium and the total wealth though is A, B, C adding together consumer plus producer surplus. Let's choose an output uh, Q2 which is not an equilibrium. So that was the original equilibrium. Output Q2 is not. Uh, Q2, well, we might charge price uh, P2 for that because we've shrunk the supply from Q1 to Q2. OK, what about the welfare loss here? Well, let's add a few letters into the into the diagram. I've added D and E, I think, there. At price uh, uh, P2, there is some extra producer surplus. <clears throat> we go back. If we raise the price from P1 to P2, that means the producer gets some extra producer surplus. But... Crucially, uh, consumer surplus goes down and goes down to ADP2. But there's an area there, DBE, DBE, which is a loss of welfare. It's a loss of producer surplus uh, and a loss of consumer surplus. And that is therefore a deadweight loss. So comparing where the market was in balance and equilibrium, the total, total welfare was ABC. Now the total welfare is A, D, E, C, <clears throat> which means we have a deadweight welfare loss equal to area D, B, E, because the market is not in an equilibrium position. OK, so that's a quick introduction into how to apply the concept of the welfare loss. There will be a series of short videos taking each individual application in turn, externalities, uh, tariffs, quotas, monopoly pricing and so on, uh, price collusion between firms in oligopoly and we'll try to link the welfare loss concept to those examples. Okay, thanks for watching this video.